Hey guys, how you doing? And welcome back to um, another video today. So today I want to speak about Mother Mary because it is very easy for us to actually forget about her, you know, her value. And um, so, you know, we all have this journey to sainthood, you know, and Mother Mary is a great model for us in our own journey to sainthood. And, you know, we, sainthood firstly is about our eternal life with the Heavenly Father. And so to reach this eternal life, to re and to walk in this, uh, what shall I say, path to sainthood, Mother Mary is that perfect example. And so I'm going to speak about different characteristics of Mother Mary and how we can be inspired by these characteristics in our um, journey to sainthood. So firstly, Mother Mary, she shows so much humility, you know, and humility is actually the probably the most important virtue because it is from this virtue of humility that all things can flow. You know, with humility, we can be obedient. With humility, we can love. You know, with humility, you know, we can show compassion and mercy. You know, humility is the very start of our uh, journey to sainthood. And so in Luke chapter 1, verses 48, it says, For she has looked on the lowliness of his servant, and so surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. So we read here that firstly, when angel Gabriel came with that message from God to conceive to the saviour of the world, you know, Mother Mary, you know, she acknowledged, you know, the, the lowliness of herself. But then she went, she goes a step further and realises that in her lowliness, God will exalt her, God will raise her up. And as she herself says, all generations will call me blessed. You see, Jesus himself says in the Gospels, that whoever exalts them, whoever humbles themselves shall be exalted, and whoever exalts themselves shall be humbled. And Mother Mary is a perfect example of that. She accepted the call of God in her humility, in her humility and as a result, God exalted her and today she has such a high position in the church. And so St. Peter, you know, echoes this. He says in 1 Peter's chapter 5 verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. So St. Peter is basically saying, you know, humble yourselves in whatever ministry, whatever thing that God is calling you to do. You know, humble yourself in your life, in all your encounters with other people. And God, in his due time, will exalt you. And so like I said, my dear friends, humility is the very start of our journey to sainthood. Because it is only when we have that humble heart, that soft heart, that heart that is ready to be, ready to be moulded by God, can we then bear fruit in all the things that we are then to do in our future. So humility is the very start of our journey. It's the very start in which God moulds our heart in our preparation to be in eternal life with him, which is precisely, like I said, what sainthood is about. So the second characteristic is, of course, obedience. And once again, from Luke chapter 1, verse 38, Mary says, Here I am, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word so there mother mary again first of all like i said from her humility acknowledges that she is just a servant of the lord but secondly as a servant she is ready to accept whatever the will of the heavenly father is and so that's why i said with humility we can then be obedient because it is only in humility we are humble enough to accept what the heavenly father calls for us to do and of course, the opposite of humility is pride. And very often at times, when we are filled with pride, we are very reluctant to be obedient. So my dear friends, if you want to live a life in obedience with God, it starts with humility. And like we see here, in her obedience, Mother Mary shows her humility. And she's ready to uh, do the work, the work of God, you know, in conceiving to the Saviour uh, of the world. But one thing that we need to also remember is that in our obedience, we can bring fruit in the lives of others. And we see this in Mother Mary in wedding in Cana. So what happens here? So we know that in the wedding of Cana, 
the people were running short on wine <clears throat> and so you know they go to mother mary and mother mary says you know do whatever he tells you now she's saying do whatever jesus you know tells you and so mother mary is telling them to be obedient to jesus she is showing them to be obedient to jesus and when they made that decision to be obedient to jesus that is when the miracle takes place their obedience to mother mary in listening to whatever jesus tells them to do it is from that obedience the miracle took place for them and so my dear friends in your obedience to god people will see the fruit of jesus the fruit that can come into their lives from jesus because when you show obedience and when you show the fruits that jesus is outpour is outpouring into your own life when people see the grace graces that you are receiving from jesus in your own life then they too will be inspired to be obedient so obedient doesn't just start with you and end with you but it it, it is shared people are inspired by obedience and you know obedience is something that is so liberating you know i remember when i um, had just joined seminary when i was talking to people about my decision to uh, to join the seminary a lot of people asked me you know but as a priest aren't you like restricted don't you have to follow what the bishop says don't you have to follow what uh, uh, other people say but you see my dear friends with obedience there is liberation when you are obedient to god you know there's a sense of freedom in that because very often in our lives we can be so conflicted with decisions but through our obedience all we have to do is say yes and we know that yes to god is the best yes and so you know we read in the catechism as well you know uh, so paragraph 494 it says at the announcement that she would give birth to the son of the most high without knowing man by the power of the holy spirit responded with the obedience of faith certain that with god nothing will be possible so you see mother mary shows that in her obedience nothing is impossible for god in your obedience to god you are evangelizing to the people around you stating that i am believing in god i am obedient to god and i will trust god because i know that with god nothing is impossible and you know mother mary's obedience is what has brought us salvation and saint irenaeus says this he says being obedient she became the cause of salvation for herself and for the whole human race the knot of eve's disobedience was untied by mary's obedience so mother mary untied the disobedience of eve what eve brought was destruction but mother mary brought salvation in her obedience so the next uh the next characteristic is contemplation and we read in luke chapter 2 verses 48 to 51 it says when his parents saw him they were astonished and his mother said to him child why have you treated us like this look your father and i have been searching for you in great anxiety and then jesus says to them why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. So this is what contemplation is about. Contemplation is about reflecting. It's about reflecting on what you have experienced in your life. And, you know, we see this uh, example here. You know, just imagine, you know, Mother Mary thought she had just lost Jesus, you know, and she was sp uh, spending three days, you know, trying to find Jesus. And then when she found Jesus, you know, you'd expect Jesus to say, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, that I was lost. But Jesus says, you know, don't you know that I'm supposed to be my father's house? You know, and so this chaotic, tur turbulent of an experience the Mother Mary went through, she could have easily, you know, took it in frustration. You know, handled the whole situation in frustration but she instead st stood back contemplated and she treasured it in her heart so to treasure something means to really value it in your life you know and bring it into your heart and value it and you know treasure it and that's what mother mary did this turbulent experience she treasured it 
into her life. She values, she valued this experience that she went through. And so what does that show? That shows that in every circumstance that we go through in life, you know, every difficulty that we're going through in life, rather than, you know, hitting it straight head on, you know, with frustration, anger, you know, do we take that step back, contemplate on it and reflect on it and think about the work of God in every problem or every circumstance that, you know, we go through in life. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is an essential characteristic of sainthood. As saints, and our journey to sainthood, we need to contemplate in life and always reflect on where God's work is in every situation of our life. And so the final characteristic that Mother Mary shows is suffering. You know, and we know that Jesus physically suffered, of course, on the cross. But how did Mother Mary suffer? Well, we see in John chapter 19, verse 25. It says, Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, and Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. So we see Mother Mary was standing at the foot of the cross, you know, and the kind of suffering that Mother Mary experienced was an internal suffering. And you know, just imagine that you are, you know, if you are a mother, you know, and if you have children, you know, you brought up your children. You know, with so much hard work, you fed them, taught them, you know, you, 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 you've been through them, in their, with them, with their difficult times, you've been with them in their joyful moments. And you know, Jesus is 100% man and 100%, you know, divine, 100% human and 100% divine. And so just imagine, you know, Mother Mary would have, you know, brought Jesus up, would have, you know, helped Jesus learn how to speak, would have helped Jesus learn how to write, would have helped Jesus you know, um, you know, in his difficult moments as a child and even his, you know, adult life moments as well. You know, Jesus went for ministry when he was 30 years old. And so just imagine for 30 years, he was with his mother and Mother Mary would have seen everything. And then from being in that atmosphere and in that environment to then seeing her own son at the foot of the cross, you know, she must have suffered so much internally. But remember, in her suffering, she was silent and this silence brings brought hope for everybody and we read in romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 4 and not only that but we also boast in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and so you know mother mary in her silence and in her suffering she brought hope because she knew what was to come after the death of Christ. And so therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, in our suffering, we, by enduring it and embracing it, you know, we are telling the people around us that I am okay because I know that there is a great purpose behind this. I know that something good will come out of this. You know, and God has permitted this suffering in my life because he wants to teach me something, because he wants to strengthen me, build on my character and give me hope and at the end this hope that you have will be passed on will be um you know will be in, and people be inspired by the hope that you have through the suffering that you go through so my dear friends just to kind of sum up you know all that we've just mentioned about mother mary's character and how that it helps us in our sainthood life saintly life you know our journey to sainthood is you know her humility her obedience, her contemplation, and her suffering. So thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you have a great week ahead. And, you know, I pray that Mother Mary becomes that great model in your life and in your journey to sainthood. Take care, guys. God bless.